when you start being able to um, understand the world around you and make predictions and then verify them using experimental techniques, you feel like you're, you're really starting to do something right and this is how you can start to do basically, and I would call it magic. University of California, Santa Barbara. If you just look outside, it, it's pretty, pretty clear how amazing this place is to live in. My name is Neva Ron. I just finished my graduate program here. I did a PhD program for five and a half years, and now I'm doing a short postdoc afterwards. My research is focused on looking at aspects of energetics and molecular geometry in organic solar cells and understanding um, the importance of these factors on charge generation and charge recombination. It's basically photocurrent generation from the sunlight. Um, we have a really good collaboration with a synthetic group here at UCSB with uh, Professor Guy Bazan, where he has these top-notch chem chemists who can synthesize custom-made molecules that they design that have very unique properties that we can then utilize to answer fundamental questions about how, how we can generate um, energy or generate power from sunlight, this whole process and what it might depend on. In OPV, in organic solar cells, you need to use two materials in order to have efficient charge generation. And it seems to be a matter of giving a driving force for charge, for charge generation. Because if you only use one material, there isn't enough of a, char of a driving force for us to be um, generating for the current. So one of the design rules that we've gone by is that you need to have two materials that have ca um, cascading energy levels. So it's like a downhill and a um, driving force to, to separate the charges. Now the question is how close do they need to be? And for a while, with certain materials, people have shown that it needs to be, let's say, 300 milli electron volts or some amount. And the uh, postdoc in Guy Bazan's lab, Ming Wang, synthesized this material that, that turns out has a really, really low energetic offset with the acceptor that we use. It's a PCBM fullerene derivative. And this was a really interesting case then where it's a system that has really low energetic offset which we think is an important driving force for charge generation but it still does pretty well um, and my my last year or two were, were focused on studying aspects of this system where we're, we characterize the, energe the energetics in the system um, using a number of techniques and then we also characterized the recombination that's happening in there because we're still losing a lot uh, in the system, but we found that we think that actually the recombination has to do with imperfect geometry, imperfect uh, morphology, that the two materials are really like too intimately mixed as opposed to having separate domains of the two materials. I can talk a lot about how amazing it would be if we can generate power from sunlight without having to burn fuels and how if we can do it using organic photovoltaics, there's so much potential for this large throughput or um, production or even just very uh, specific applications, like if we want to have transparent solar cells, things like that, that we can put on windows or etc. cetera. Um, but what I would say is actually the most exciting part is just the process of understanding and the process of learning how things work. And when you're able to start connecting dots, that other people are telling you, or even connecting that that nobody else has put together, that there's a sense of exhilaration and satisfaction in that that you can't really find in other things. <laughs>